Hi, I'm Alex, and I'm an engineer over at ANSYS. Today I'm going to be talking about using the Horizon system, uh, so from JPL, using the Horizon system, getting some SPICE files, uh, to then use an SDK to use as satellites um, to you know, look at some trajectories from interplanetary missions or missions that JPL might be tracking. In this case, I'm going to be looking at the James Webb mission. So James Webb, huge telescope that many people have heard about. Uh, if you're at all interested in space and you haven't heard of James Webb, um, you might want to read up. It's a really cool mission, one of the most ambitious of humans to date, uh, and AGI had a large role in helping plan that mission. Uh, in this case, I'm looking at a scenario that we built after the mission even launched, uh, but I built this and was able to determine what maneuvers were going to be needed uh, using the ephemeris I took from JPL Horizons, and then backwards propagating and determining what the maneuvers were using SDK Astrogator. So if I play this scenario, we can see the James Webb Space Telescope. It's going to fly out very quickly from Earth all the way out to L2, in this case, I'm in a body-body rotating frame with that L2 point. And we can see James Webb go ahead and enter that halo orbit. So if I pause that scenario, what I'm actually playing here is an astrogator sequence. Uh, and as I was saying, I went and back-solved for one of the maneuvers that was actually required to get James Webb out to this L2 point, and then look at the correction maneuvers that may have been needed. And I was able to solve for that uh, just by using the ephemeris that I had. So the process for getting these ephemeris has kind of changed. The Horizons website has been updated and looks a bit different than it did before. Uh, it's a lot more attractive now, so <laughs> it's good to work with. Uh, but the process has changed in the way that people who are using SDK may have traditionally gotten that ephemeris. So on the Horizons system website, what I want to do is go to the App tab. And here I have the traditional options for exporting in ephemeris. Uh, it's possible to get splice files from here as well. Um, we're not going to be doing that. We're just going to get text file ephemerides, and then we can use those in SDK. What I want to do here is make sure that my ephemeris type is set to vector table. My target body, that's just going to be whatever spacecraft or asteroid or planet that I'm looking to use in my SDK scenario. In this case, there's a lookup for specified body text box. But I'm just going to leave James Webb because that's a satellite I wanted to take a look at. The coordinate center is very important. This is a geocentric coordinate center. Uh, in this case, just to make things easy for SDK, we're going to go ahead and leave geocentric. It just means it's going to be in the geocentric frame. The time specification, a lot of times this will be from just you know, a few hours or a day after launch until you know, even after the time that I'm currently in. So if today is March 16th, uh, I might be able to get an ephemeris until you know, something like March 20th because JPL has propagated until that point. Um, up until the date that you're pulling from, that ephemeris is going to be real. It's going to be the measurements they've actually taken. Uh, but past that, it'll be propagated. In this case, I've just used the February 15th date. It was about a month ago now. Um, that's all I really care about. I just wanted to recreate this one maneuver, so I went and pulled from, from this point. Uh, so right after launch, uh, which was Christmas, actually, um, and then up to the 15th of February, which was after a major maneuver. I can also change the step size. Uh, in this case, I wanted to do one hour, just so I don't get some really strange interpolation. Um, so one hour is a pretty safe bet if you're going to do, uh, you know, maybe it looks like right now I'm doing about 20 days. 20 days at one hour should be a good amount of time. Um, shouldn't have any interpolation issues. The table settings is perhaps the most important part of generating uh, one of these ephemerides. So in this case, I want to make sure that my output quantities are state vector. So that's position, uh, Cartesian position, and then velocity as well, uh, x, y, z. The reference frame, ICRF, is going to work just fine. Uh, geocentric ICRF is a frame that many SDK ephemerides are in, and that's going to be fine for us. It's exactly what we want. The reference, plane, the reference plane is particularly important. Uh, those x, y axes of reference frame, so it's going to be equatorial or equatorial aligned inertial. Uh, we want to make sure that we have those. Uh, the ecliptic x, y plane is not what SDK is going to use for this ephemeris. It's not going to be what it uses for this plane. Uh, and body mean equator, also not going to work. We want to make sure we're using the x, y axes of the reference frame. And the output units, uh, kilometers and seconds, and the vector correction, just geometric states. It's fine. Let's make sure we have vector labels, and then I want to make this in CSV format as well. The object summary I can do with or do without. Uh, I kind of like it. It makes me feel very technical, <laughs> but we're going to strip it anyway, so not a problem. And then I can go ahead and click Generate. And you can see at the top here I get a lot of that information. Uh, that's that object information. We're going to strip most of that, but it is really interesting to read about James Webb. Uh, so if you don't know anything about it, <laughs> feel free to read the object information from uh, the APL Horizons Ephemeris. But if I scroll down, I can see what trajectory files are being used, which is particularly interesting. I can see where this is being taken from. But if I really scroll down here, I can see that I'm getting my date and then my position 
and then I'm also getting the velocity. And those are what I'm going to need for my ephemeris uh, for SDK. You can see this is actually in Julian date, so that's an important point. So I can download the results, there's a button right here, and that's just going to save off this file so that I can edit it on my own. And that's what we're going to need to do to get it in SDK. So I can download that results. And I can see horizon results.txt is the file that I get downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and open that file. I prefer to use a text editor like Notepad++. It gives me a little bit, it gives me more features that are going to be useful. Uh, in this case, we're going to need that. So now I have my text file open, and I need to make it an SDK ephemeris, so a .e file for those that are familiar. In this case, I'm going to remove the entire header. <laughs> it was cool to read, and it's good information to have, uh, but what all I need to do is go ahead and remove all of it. So I'm going to just highlight all of it and delete it. I can also delete this SOE keyword. So I'm left just with the Julian date, uh, the UTC date, calendar date, and then the position and velocity. In this case, what I'm going to, need to do is go ahead and format this file. I'm going to remove everything but Julian date, J date, and the space and the position and velocity. But I want only spaces, white space between all of that. Uh, so this is CSV format. Uh, so I'm going to need to remove those commas as well. Um, in Notepad++, the easiest thing to do is just search and replace any commas for spaces. So I can just Control F. I can find and replace. I can find comma, and I can replace it with just a space, and I can replace all. And once I've done that, I can look at my file, and suddenly the commas are gone. You can also do a similar thing. You can make a tab-separated file um, using Excel. Uh, just move that in. It's a CSV already. We can make it a tab-separated and save it as a text. A lot of ways to do that formatting. In something like Notepad++, it's easy. And the last thing I need to do is highlight this entire column. Again, this is, could be done in Excel as well, but in this case, I'm just going to use Notepad++. I can vertical highlight by holding Alt and scroll all the way down to the bottom. And you'll see that I get a lot of data for that hour. Uh, so, you know, it's a good thing I only did an hour time step. But I'm going to need to delete all of that. And I've got a little bit more, just some residual. This part's probably easily done in Excel, uh, but again, Notepad++ is, uh, is an easy environment to work with text files. So that's why we're doing it here. Great, and now I can delete all of this. And now I'm just left with JDate, my position, and my velocity. See, there's also a footer. I'm going to go ahead and delete all of that. I'm not going to need any of that. And now I'm just left with a JDate and my position and my velocity. That's truly all that's in this file. What I need to do now is just quickly add the STK required header and footer. So I'm going to go ahead, make some space at the top. And I'm going to copy this in from a file that I already have. Uh, but this is available on our website. This format is accessible at help.agi.com. If you just search ephemeris or .e file, it's all right there. But I'll show you what we're going to need for this file. So I've pulled up an example file that I have for this exact purpose. In this case, I just want to grab the header that's going to be used for the SDK ephemeris file. So I'm going to copy that header and just paste it into my new file. And there are some keywords here that are important that are described on that help page for the SDK ephemeris. But you can see I just need a begin ephemeris. I also need a version. Uh, so if you're using anything earlier than 12.2, all you need to do is go ahead and change this. Uh, so maybe I'm using 11.7. Hopefully you're not. Please upgrade. <laughs> a lot of great new features. If I have 11.7 here, I can just go ahead and save it like this. The number of ephemeris points, this I can actually just get rid of. I don't need this number. It's an optional, optional clarification. Uh, the interpolation method, Lagrange, and interpolation order, uh, I usually leave this as Lagrange in 5. Um, you will get some different results, but nothing too crazy. Uh, this is a good default. Kilometers is a distance unit. That's because that's what we used in the APL Horizon system to generate this file. And the central body is the Earth. That's a geocentric coordinate system we specified, uh, coordinate system ICRF. The time format is JDate, so that's SDK's keyword for Julian date, which is our time format. And then the ephemeris type, it's going to be time and position and velocity, because that's what we have. Those are all the keywords that we need. I'm going to save this file. The only thing that we need at the end of the file is going to be end ephemeris. So at the very end of the file, I'm going to type in all caps, end, and then ephemera. Now that I've put my header in and finished my file with end ephemeris, I can go ahead and just save that file as a .e, which I've already done here. You can see I can just save as. 
go ahead and change that all types so I can add a .e at the end instead of .txt, all types, and then JWST, and then I have this file going to February 15th, so I've just done 2.15.e. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and just load it into SDK. So in this case, I've loaded it in as reference ephemeris. You can see that 2.15 ends just before we enter that halo orbit. And that's exactly what I was trying to do. I just wanted to see what kind of correction maneuver was needed to get into that halo orbit. And in this case, I can go ahead and solve for it uh, using Astrogator. All I have to do is use that reference ephemeris. So that's propagator SDK external. And then I just find my file using this file name tab, in this case, WJ, uh, WJWST, <laughs> James Webb Space Telescope, uh, 2.15.e, and then go ahead and click OK. So I have my trajectory here. Uh, now I can go ahead and use that as an initial state for SDK Astrogator and solve for that maneuver. And that's exactly what we've done here. As I was showing earlier, we're going to follow that reference ephemeris and use that as, as an initial state right at the end, and then we can solve for our maneuver. And that's a new way to use the Horizon system to get ephemeris into SDK. Uh, previously, there was a script for that because of the new formatting. Some of that doesn't work. Uh, this is a new way to do it. Uh, it's mostly manual for the time being. Uh, but feel free to write your own parser. Feel free to write something that's going to make that file for you. Um, and one of our engineers will surely do it soon, and hopefully we'll get that out. But again, uh, new, new system. It works similarly to the old one, uh, but looks much prettier and gives us the same great result. Uh, lets us use SDK to do some really cool things with some very cool missions. Again, my name is Alex. If you have any questions about this or anything else with SDK, feel free to contact support at agi.com or give us a call. Uh, we're available from 7 to 7. Have a great day.